Okay, you guys, so now we're going to talk about um, exponential functions. Um, because we're talking about exponential functions, obviously we have to know a little bit about laws of exponents. Um, I would just write these down, you guys, you need to know all of these. Um, should be something that you're already familiar with, but you guys all know that the um, when you have two bases that are the same, you add the powers when you're multiplying. When you're dividing two bases that are the same, you subtract the powers. When you have a power and then another power directly after, you multiply the powers. And in this case, you are actually allowed to distribute the power because it is multiplication. Okay, you're not allowed to do that otherwise. All right, so in this problem, you distribute the power and you get a to the m times b to the m. And then you guys know negative exponents just are reciprocals, they turn things upside down. And then any number to the zero power is one besides zero and infinity. So we're not counting a as zero in this case or infinity. Um, but the main thing I wanna focus on in 5.3, this is gonna be a very short video, um, maybe 15, 20 minutes, is I just wanna look at some of the graphs. Um, some of this is lost a little bit because we have a graphing calculator now and um, you can use this to graph, but I then do wanna focus on solving at the end. So, um, we have graphs of exponential functions. We're going to kind of look at this format. Now, A can either be greater than 1 or A can be less than 1 um, in terms of still a positive number. We normally like to talk about it as A is a positive number. It doesn't have to be, but that's um, the way we like to think of exponential functions. Um, so this is kind of the format we're looking at. And based on if A is a fraction or if A is a, a fraction smaller than 1 or a fraction greater than 1, um, it kind of changes the outlook of the problem. But I think the best way to get started is let's just kind of look at a base one. Let's look at two to the x power. So this is kind of like the most common exponential function ever. And what we would do is we should pick some numbers. Let's pick negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one. Let's go, let's go a few more. Let's go the same amount. Let's go two and let's go three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick negative three and I'm gonna do negative three, so two to the negative three power is actually one over eight. Two to the negative two power is actually one over four. Two to the negative one power is actually one half. Two to the zero is one. Two to the one is two. Two to the two is four. And two to the three is eight. Remember, negative exponents just turn things upside down. So because two to the three was eight, that means two to the negative three would be one over eight, okay? So now I'm just gonna graph these values real quick. So negative three is right here, right? And I'm gonna go up one eighth. So I'm gonna do like right there. And then I'm gonna go negative two up one fourth. That's like right there. And then negative one up one half. That's like right about there. And then zero would be up one. And then up over one, up two. Now over two, up four. And then over three, up eight. And I don't know exactly where that is, but I'm just gonna put it like that. So this is what, oops. Okay. So by the way, this graph will never touch the x-axis. It'll get infinitely close, but never touch. Okay. Because no matter what, whenever you do two to any power, it will not become zero unless that power is negative infinity. But we're not dealing with that. We can't actually plug and plot negative infinity. So we're not going to do with that uh, or deal with that. We can maybe talk about that in Calc 1. Um, but that would be what my graph looks like. So what I want to show you is what you know about transformation still behaves the same. So this graph looks a certain way and it looks like it crosses at one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this new graph cross at two. And then let me see, it looks like it won't cross where the x-axis is zero. So this graph then will not cross this new like shifted up x-axis. I'm gonna shift it up one and I'm gonna have like this little asymptote right here. So I'm gonna draw the exact same graph, just kind of guessing. And it's gonna be the same thing, okay? Now I'm gonna take out my calculator and I'm just gonna verify that that's what would actually happen. Oops, so let's take out my calculator and let's do two to the X. Oh man.
So we got two to the X plus one. And you know what, let's graph two to the X also on the same graph. So there's that, and then there's that. So basically the blue line is the two to the X plus one. So it's the exact same graph shifted up one. Let's see what happens when we mess with stuff. So let's clear this and let's put this as our primary graph. Let's do two to the X, right? Now let's do two to the negative X. Let's try that. Let's see what that does. That'll be some kind of reflection, right? So there's the primary one and there's the other one. It's a reflection across the Y axis, or I guess not across the Y axis, but um, it has some kind of symmetry. Yeah, it has symmetry across the Y axis, okay? Um, so that looks kind of clean. Now let's do another one. Let's try negative two to the X. Let's see what that does. I bet that'll reflect it downward. There you go, and it's a perfect reflection, just what we thought it would do. Now, one thing that's kind of weird, let's see what happens here. Let's do two to the power, um, did I already do negative X? I can't remember if I did this one or not, you guys. Or you know what, I think I did do this one. Let's do two to the X minus one. Let's see what that does. Now, according to what we know, that should be a shift to the right of one. Let's see. Yep, see how it kind of moved everything, the values all moved over just a little bit. Okay, so I hope you guys can see that you can just play with your graphing utility um, to get what you want. You can get it to do whatever you need it to do. Um, so that's why I kind of didn't want to spend a super um, a, amount of time on this. I'll just do this real quick. Let's do negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and three. But again, I kind of already knew what was going to happen. So when we plug negative two and negative three in there, we get one eighth plus one is one and one eighth. This is one and one fourth. This is one and one half. This is one, or no, I'm sorry, this is two, right? Because when you plug that in, you get one plus one, which is two. This is now three. This is now five. And this is now nine. And we would get something similar to this. Okay, but notice none of the values are ever going to go below this green line right here at one, right? None of the values are ever going to go below this green line because this green line is like our new x-axis, our new asymptote, okay? So um, I just wanted to show you guys a couple of those. Let's look at what happens to the graph if I do, um, let's say f of x equals one-third. No, let's say one-half. X. Okay, so let's take out our calculator and let's go Y equals. So now do parentheses one divided by two and then close parentheses to the X. Now something you might not expect happens. Okay, so we didn't do any reflections. What this is actually saying is, is that as X gets larger and larger, so this right hand side of the graph is basically saying that as X gets larger and larger, you're getting closer and closer to zero. So let's see why. Okay, so you have your graph right here. So what this graph is saying is right here at one. Oops, it's not supposed to cross you guys. Okay, so what this is saying is is that as X gets further and further out here, as we go further and further um, towards infinity, you are basically taking one half to a bigger and bigger power. But think about this, what's one half to the third? Wouldn't that be one half times one half times one half? Well, that's one eighth. Well, what's one half to the seventh? Well, that would be one half times one half, you know, all the way down to one half and then 764, I think it's like one over 128, if I remember correctly, I don't know. Um, but you guys get the idea, right? Um, let me see, let me just do it just to make sure. Two to the seven, oops. Yeah, 120, I was right. So um, as you can see, one over 28, the next one will be one over 256, the next one will be one over 512. What you're doing is you're getting a decimal value or a fractional value that is getting closer and closer to zero. 
and the bigger the x is, the closer you become to zero. Eventually, you're going to be like 0.0000000000125 or something like that, right? So when you put a fraction, a proper fraction in here, you are going to always take on this decreasing function, okay? As long as, you know, it's a positive number. When you put a and you make it a, you know, a... a improper fraction or a number larger than one, then you're always going to get this increasing exponential function. Okay. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, again, if you put like negatives and stuff and you start doing that, obviously that's going to change, but this is kind of for the basic a to the X. All right. So I just wanted to show you guys a little bit about the, the graphs of this. <clears throat> okay. So um, let's see here. Um, there's another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. I said, what happens to um, 1 plus 1 over n to the n as n approaches infinitely large? Okay. So I want to see what this is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend um, that we're just picking really big numbers for n. So let's start with n and let's call this f of n, okay, this function, okay? So what we're going to do is let's plug in n equals uh, 10. Let's do 100. Let's do 1,000. Let's do 10,000. And let's do 100,000, okay? So I'm just going to take my calculator. And I'm going to plug this in. I'm going to do 1 plus 1 divided by 10. I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to take that to the 10th power. And I get 2.59. Now, here's the weird part. The more I think about it, I want to make, I want to talk about this. This is 1. And then what's 1 divided by a really, 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 really big number? So let's say one divided by 500 bazillion, just make up some number, one giant number that you, know, you can't even talk about is so big. Well, wouldn't that basically be nothing? If you take a dollar and you divide it by all the stars in the sky, it's basically gonna be nothing, right? So you're basically saying one plus nothing, which is one, to the power of the biggest number you can think of, which is one to the power of, you know, let's say 500 million. Well, one to the 500 millionth is one. But this is even bigger than that, right? We're just saying that what's happening is n is getting closer and closer to infinity. Well, should, it shouldn't matter, right? One times one times one times one times one, no matter how many times you do it, is always going to be one. Well, we're going to see that things might change. So now I'm going to say, well, what happens as we do one plus one over 100? So one plus one divided by 100 to the power of 100, I get 2.7. Oops, wrong marker, but that's okay. 2.7048, okay? And, and I'm rounding off, you guys, um, just as many decimals as I feel like. So now let's do 1 plus 1 divided by 1,000 to the power of 1,000. I get 2.71692, blah, 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 blah. I, well, I shouldn't even use dots because that means it means it extends in that pattern. But you guys get the idea, okay? Now let's... Let's do um, one plus one divided by 10,000 to the 10,000. And I get 2.718, um, one five, I guess, if you want to round off. Let's now do one plus one divided by 100,000. And let's take that to the power of 100,000. And I get 2.718268, I guess. So now it's not, it doesn't look like it's approaching one. It looks like it's approaching 2.718, right? Because I got 2.718 here and I got 2.718 here. Here I got 2.71, here I got 2.7. So if you wanted to just guess, you're saying it's going to be somewhere around 2.7. This one's kind of odd man out, 2.59, but that's because it wasn't enough um, ends yet. We weren't big enough yet, okay? Well, as it turns out, this is, comes from calculus, um, and this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n, okay? So this is the number e, okay? So what happens to this? Well, it so 1 plus 1 over n 
to the n approaches e. That's what happens, the natural number, okay? So in calculus, we get to say that it is in fact equal to e. It becomes so close that you can no longer tell the difference, and that's the idea of limits, okay? Um, where they, it's almost like they occupy the same space without actually being the same, you know, or something like that. So um, we're getting infinitely close to E, so, so close that we say it is E, okay? So this is where the natural number comes from. This is uh, the idea behind it. So if you ever run into this situation, which happens a lot, 1 plus 1 over n to the n or 1 plus 1 over x to the x, be on the lookout. I can almost guarantee you something in there is going to become E at some point. Normally that it just develops within the problem and you find it. So this is how we can talk about E now. Um, it's not just some made up number. It's found in this fashion. This is the definition of E um, in calculus. So um, I just wanted to show you that. Now there's a couple other things that I want to show you guys in this. So the last part of uh, what you'll see in your homework is solving exponential equations, okay? So suppose that I have two to the three X equals four to the X plus one. Okay, and I got another one over here. E to the X squared equals E to the X, oops, three X minus two. Okay, so we have this. So let me just write, this is part A, this is part B. Okay, so here's the thing. I want to know what X is. So I'm going to use techniques that I, I've learned over the years and that you guys already know, right? So we're going to do this. The main goal is that if possible, you always try to get the bases to be the same number, if possible. And normally you go downward, you don't go upward. So we already have two to the three X. Now four is really two squared X plus one, okay? And again, all I did was I rewrote two, um, this as that used to be four, right? And I rewrote it as two squared. There's nothing wrong with that, that's legal. So now what I can do is I can say two to the three X is equal to two to the two X plus two. All I did was I distributed because it's a power to a power, I have to multiply. And when you multiply powers, you gotta distribute, right? So I have two to the two X plus two. Now here's the thing. A lot of people mistakenly, they incorrectly do this. They then divide by two. This is 100% illegal because these are exponents, they come before division. So you cannot do that. However, what you can do is you can think and you can say, now hold on, hold on a second. If I have two to the three X and it has to equal two to the two X plus two, well, since the bases are the same, I can kind of forget about them for now and I can focus on the exponent. So I can just kind of say three X is equal to two X plus two. Now, all I do is minus two X minus two X and I now have X is equal to two. Okay, and what that means is if you take two and you plug it in here and you take two and you plug it in here, you'll get the same number. Let's check two to the three X when X is two. So this would become two to the six is equal to four to the third. But this is 64 and four to the third is 64. So it does in fact work. So X to the, or X equals two is in fact our answer. So what I want you guys to remember is I didn't divide these twos. I did not do that. That is wrong to do. That's not what I did. What I did was, is I said, because the bases are the same, I can now focus on the exponents because the only way that the left side is going to equal the right side and the bases are the same, is that the exponents are also the same. So I can kind of like drop off the bases for now and just worry about the exponents. Okay, so let me have you guys try this one over here. So take a minute, pause the video, try to solve this one in the same way that I just did that. The bases are already the same, so you're good. All right, so hopefully you unpause the videos and you notice that this X, I'm sorry, this E and this E are the same base. So what we can do is we can just set X squared equal to three X minus two. Now this becomes x squared minus three x plus two. I just moved everything over to the other side, set it equal to zero. This becomes x minus two, x minus one equals zero. So x equals two and x equals one. And this means that if I plug either one of these back in, I will get the left side equals the right side. It will be in fact the same number. Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully you guys are okay with this. Let's look at another one. Let's look at C. 
Fang. Let me see. I'll find another one here. <clears throat> so what if we have oops, four to the two x minus one is equal to the eight x? And I want to find one from your guys' homework real quick. I think I put a good one in your homework. Or a couple good ones, I should say. Yeah, this one. So this is a good one. So this one says 36x times 6x squared equals 1296 squared. Okay, so pause the video a second and try these two problems real quick. Okay, so hopefully you did this one. You made both of it. Oops, did I write this one wrong? Uh, I think I may have written this problem wrong. This is 8 to the x. I'm sorry. Well, that butchered everything. You guys probably struggled a lot. Sorry about that. It's 8 to the x. Okay, repause the video. Let's give it a shot. Okay, sorry about that, you guys. So now you should have... 2 squared to the 2x minus 1 is equal to 2 cubed to the x. So remember, all I'm doing is rewriting these as what they used to be. 2 squared is the same as 4, and 2 cubed is the same as 8. So I haven't done anything wrong. Now this becomes 2 to the 4x minus 2, because I have to uh, multiply. And this becomes 2 to the 3x. Once again, because the bases are the same, because the bases are the same, I can just focus on the powers. That's the only way the left side would equal the right side. So now I'm going to subtract 3x, subtract 3x, add 2, add 2. This is just a coincidence. It's the same answer again. So x equals 2, once again. All right? So hopefully you guys are okay with this one. Now, this one's a little bit harder. Um, let me see here. Um, this is actually six, 36 is really six squared, right? And that's six squared to the X times six to the X squared equals now 1296. I have a feeling that that has something to do with six. So let's do six to the fourth. Six to the fourth is in fact 1296 and it's squared. So now let's clean this up. Now this is gonna become six to the two X times six to the X squared. And this is six to the eight. Right when you do all of our all of our properties of exponents or laws of exponents. So now let's see. Well, these have the same bases and they're being multiplied. So I can add the powers. So this becomes six to the x squared plus two x equals six to the eight. Now, once again, our job is complete. The bases are the same. So now we can compare exponents. x squared plus two x equals eight x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. Um, let's keep going. x minus, let's say x plus 4 times x minus 2. So x equals negative 4 and x equals 2. And these would be our two answers. Okay. And both of these would work. That's what this is saying is that you plug either one, negative 4 or 2, into the original and you will get an identity. The left side will equal the right side. Now I had a harder one in here something um, a little bit harder. Oh no, I guess we'll save that for, um, we can do that. Well, I, let me give you one more. Um, so this would be what, E? Let's say that we have E to the X squared equals E to the three X times one over E squared, okay? So here's the thing. Remember that we talked about negative exponents can account for reciprocals. So I could rewrite this by using negative exponents. Okay, now, I'll, oops, I'll give you guys a second before I just um, talk about it. So go ahead and see if you guys can rewrite this. Remember, e to the negative 2 is the same as 1 over e squared. But now, because I'm multiplying, I can do e to the x squared equals e to the 3x minus 2. And then, from there, I can compare, because the bases are the same, I can compare exponents. And this is the same problem I think we did earlier. 
it ends up working out the same. Not that it was the same, but it ended up working out to be. It just looked different. Okay, and that's how you do all of these exponential equations. Your goal is to make the bases the same. Now, if you cannot make the bases the same, like if you had five to the X is equal to three to the X plus one, you cannot make those bases the same. So what we'll learn in the next section is logarithms. And logarithms are a way that we can deal with exponential functions. Okay, another way to rewrite them. All right, you guys, that's gonna do it for this video. We'll talk about this um, in the next couple videos, but um, please get started on the homework. I had to give you a little bit more because um, I think I asked in some of the sections like seven or eight like concept questions where it's just, you know, real quick answer them. So it looks like more than it is. Um, but that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.